It's a strange feeling when you know that you're being watched. That you're being scrutinized. That's how all of Greece has felt for the last two weeks. The whole world looking over their shoulder as every Greek was called on to vote on whether it was finally time to turn their backs on Europe, default on their crippling debts, and face financial disaster alone. We have economic problems. The pneumonia that we wrote to be able to move to our hands μας φτάσανε σε ένα διέξοδο. I began covering this story five years ago, when the Greek crisis was just getting started. This is now the only way to operate here in Central Athens, right outside the Parliament building. And it wasn't so much intractable as it was chaotic. Things have since rapidly deteriorated. Manoli Leonakis can't help but worry about what the ongoing crisis will mean for his one-year-old son, George. Matina is George's great-grandmother. Here is the beloved place, because when I came here, I was 39 years old. I meet her while she's minding the shoe kiosk she's worked at every day for 37 years. The business started by her late husband. Matina is now a pensioner, one of the thousands of elderly who have had to wait endlessly outside ailing Greek banks to claim what is now only 120 euros a week. Matina says that this is the hardest time she's ever lived through, and that includes the Second World War. It's not mere hyperbole, either. Many economists have pointed out that Greece's unemployment rate is now higher than in America during the Great Depression. Hard times for Greece, indeed. Ούτε στην κατοχή δεν τόζησα, ούτε στα χρόνια που δούλεψα και μεγάλωσα το παιδί μου, ούτε σαν επαγγελματίας, ούτε τίποτα. Υπάρχει μια ανησυχία, υπάρχει ένας φόβος, όλα αυτά. When this Greek tragedy began, the man in charge was newly elected Prime Minister George Pompadreou. When I was first here, sinister graffiti of him began appearing everywhere in the streets. This week was the first time I got to sit down with him and ask how did things go so wrong. The previous government had actually fudged the numbers and sent official numbers to, to the European Union, which were wrong. So there were, there were two problems here. I had a credibility, we had a budget deficit, we had a, uh, a current account deficit, that is a competitiveness, and we had a credibility deficit. And actually the biggest deficit was the credibility deficit, that we weren't, pe people weren't seeing Greece as credible. A credibility crisis. Greek politicians were now seen as corrupt, ordinary citizens as tax evaders. All of us have a problem for the situation that is this time in Greece. And when I say all, I mean all. Everyone is in the amount that they are comparing. Of course, we are not the most important people we have. But not even us. But everyone was lying. European politicians and Goldman Sachs were complicit in cooking the books to get Greece into the EU. But it was only Greece that came away with a crisis of credibility. By 2010, the only loans that Greece could secure now came from Europe and the IMF. 
loaning 50 billion euros. They gave more again as the country's struggles continued. All up, Greece now owes close to half a trillion dollars. Attached to the bailouts were strict conditions that ended up crippling the Greek economy's ability to recover enough to pay anyone back. Greece was both bailed out and punished at the same time. The mistakes on, on, on the Greek side, we had this huge deficit and huge debt, but there were mistakes also on the, on the side of the European Union for not supporting real reform in Greece in the initial stages. Uh, we ended up in blame games. This might be the most vital lesson of the Greek crisis. Don't break the back of the debtor if you expect him to work off his debts. I went to the ATM and take my last 50 euros from the bank. I'm not worrying about me, I will find my way. I'm worrying about uh, not having something uh, for my kid. So you're Greece's future, huh? Yes. George? Giorgo? <coughs> no. <coughs> Even as he's spending his last 50 euros stockpiling antibiotics and baby formula for his little boy, Menali is still willing to stay the course, to keep with the euro, and help pay back Greece's staggering loans. So that George doesn't have to. Ναι, σίγουρα θέλω να μείνω στο ευρώ και να και να πληρώσω τα τα χρέη που μου αναλογούν αν με ρωτάς αυτό. The day of the referendum, Manoli's options look simple enough. Ohi, Greek for no, and nai, Greek for yes. Simple answers. It's just that no one seems to know the question. Ωραία. Το, το θέμα είναι ότι οι προηγούμενες κυβερνήσεις δανειστήκανε υπέρογκα ποσά. Έχουμε πληρώσει όμως από ό,τι ξέρω και υπέρογκα ποσά. Κάτι άκουσα ότι έχουμε πληρώσει 1,5-3 εκατομμύριο σε τόπους. Μα δεν ξέρω τι είναι το ναι και το όχι δεν ξέρω τι είναι. Αν ψηφίσω ναι, τι, ε, τι θα κερδίσω. Αν ψηφίσω όχι, θα κερδίσω τι. Αυτή η ψήφος είναι για να είναι αυγούμε από τε... Το ευρώ είναι να μείνουμε στο ευρώ και να μας ελέγχουν το δουλουτού. It takes me a little while to come to grips with the fact that, as strange as this seems, no one is voting on the actual referendum question. The yes voters believe that they're voting to carry on in the euro. The no voters believe they're voting against further austerity measures. Prime Minister Cipres only adds to the confusion when he tells Greeks that this is really a confidence vote in his government and their hardline tactics. <laughs> Trumping fear with democracy does sound pretty good, except that the actual referendum the words on the page that Mano Lee walks into the booth to vote on are about whether or not he supports a bailout agreement with Europe that is no longer even being offered. It was withdrawn a week ago. The referendum starts looking a lot like empty political theater. The result is a strong no vote. No to austerity. Greece's hard-line, fiery health minister tells us that the vote sends a clear message to Europe. Και νομίζω ότι η δημοκρατία στην Ευρώπη δεν πέθανε. If the message of the referendum doesn't move European leaders, 
I ask if he and the rest of the country will have no choice but to submit to their creditors' tough demands. Θέλω να πω κάτι μέσα από την ψυχή μου. Μπορεί να μας επιβάλλουν τις δικές τους απαιτήσεις και μπορεί να αναγκαστώ να υπογράψω και εγώ. Όμως μέσα μου θα έχει πεθάνει η πίστη μου για το ευρωπαϊκό εγχείρημα. The referendum sends a clear message and Greece gets a clear answer from German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Guten Tag. Das heißt also, wir werden heute harte Gespräche haben und äh, es wird auch keine Einigung um jeden Preis geben. Cyprus is effectively ordered to sign over the financial future of Greece almost immediately or exit the Eurozone within days, bankrupt while its banks collapse. This is what German Chancellor Angela Merkel calls difficult talks. The Greek Prime Minister signs and returns to Greece under the cloud of his own credibility crisis. The past week begs the question, why did Cyprus ever hold the referendum in the first place? George Papandreou says the referendum was originally his idea, but that Cyprus went about it all wrong. I had suggested a referendum after the agreement, and in a referendum where the government actually says yes, and asks the Greek people to say yes. He came out and says, we don't have an agreement, I want you to vote on a non-agreement, and I want you to vote no, and the no will simply be to strengthen my negotiating hand. Had he, however, negotiated with his partners, had come up with an, ag an agreement, said, this is what I could do, guys, I'm taking this to a uh, to referendum, let the Greek people decide, I think he would have had a resounding yes, and we would have had uh, uh, also a much, much more, a, a deeper sense of credibility, both inside Greece, but also outside Greece, that this program will actually be implemented. The referendum has left Cyprus's prime ministership in tatters. Public spectacle having been made of his powerlessness. All this echoes the biggest complaint I've heard in the last few weeks from people on the streets of Greece. Not that they feel poor, even despite their shuttered banks and historic unemployment. The biggest complaint I hear is that they feel powerless to change their future, to secure their children's future, that they've been left stranded in Europe without options. Το πρόβλημα είναι για τους νέους και για τα μωρά και για τη χώρα. Αυτό. Τι άλλο να πω. Δεν έχει άλλο. Τέλος. Τέλος. Nothing. Αυτά. Εντάξει.